Okay, let's go ahead and tape, uh, take off all our packing tape and we'll start pulling the pieces off here. For the SG-800, we have two choices of ink cartridges. We have regular and large. For in, By the way, you can mix and match the cartridges once installed. So the regular size are 42 milliliters for the black and 29 for the CM white. For the large cartridges, we have 68 milliliters for the black and CMY is 60 milliliters. The cost savings of the large cartridges is about 20%. Um, and so just pick which one you need. I would recommend that most people, if they, unless they have a track record, that they start off with the regular cartridges. I think that's a good choice. Also, on each cartridge, you're going to find that there is a use-by date for the cartridge. Use-by date is very important. Using ink after the use-by date can cause color shifts and it can also, in my opinion, lessen the life of the printer. With each cartridge that comes from Condi, you'll get an ink minder sticker. The sticker lets you know what the use-by date is and on your printer will be an ink minder plate. You'll put the stickers on the plate and that's your easy to in-your-face kind of representation of where you stand with your cartridge use by dates. All right, let's go ahead and put our cartridges in and charge the printer. Okay, let's open our ink door. It's right here. And this is our bay where our cartridges go. I want to point out two things in here. First is the serial number for the printer is on the label inside the door, and that may be important, especially at registration. Next is the ink collector unit is sitting underneath the bay here and we pull it out like this. The ink collector unit is what holds the waste ink. The ink that's in the cartridges can only go two places. Once it can go on the paper or it can go in here. If you do cleanings, flushings, things like that, ink will be deposited in here. This should take a long time to fill up, maybe one year, something like that. When it's full, you replace it. Put in a new one, they're inexpensive. If you're right in the middle of a print job, refer to my videos on how to push some magic keys on the front panel, and you can tell the printer to temporarily ignore the ink collector until it comes in. But at any rate, ultimately when it gets full, it does need to be replaced. All right. You'll notice these bays are each very wide, and that is to accommodate both the normal size cartridges and the large cartridges. You can put the cartridges in in any order. Um, let's put the black one in here, and then the cyan, and then magenta, and then yellow. Once the cartridges are installed, the only reason for you to pull it out and replace it would be, number one, if it's empty, or number two if the ink is expired. If the cartridge shows that it's low, that's not time to replace the cartridges. As we'll get into with the Rico ink system, it's very efficient and you should only replace a cartridge uh, when the printer says it's time to replace it. So we've closed the ink door, now we're going to connect power. Okay, the power for the printer is on the left side. We're going to plug it in here and push the cord into this little slot and we are now ready to turn it on. Okay, let's put our ink minder stickers on. These are going to be inside the cartridges when you get the ink from Condi. that easy to keep up with your ink dates. We've got about six minutes to charge the ink. During this process, it's removing the ink from the cartridges, pumping it into the tubes that we'll show later. You're not wasting any ink, we're just moving it from the cartridges into the printer. Uh, now that we're finished loading the printer, we're at a ready state, and you could look at the relative levels of the inks here with the little bar graphs. This last one is the remaining capacity 
for the ink collector unit that I told you about earlier. And the, the lack of bars is good. So that shows you lots of remaining space. When there's all bars here, that means we're getting close to filling up the ink collector unit. And again, you shouldn't have to replace the ink collector unit, but maybe once a year, something like that. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through a little tour of the different parts of the printer, and then we're going to load some paper in the paper tray. I'm going to show you how to, how to run some things through the front panel, some tests and so forth, and then we'll hook it up to my laptop.